So what we're going to be taking a look at next is the menu layouts within X3. So all the various functions that you go into, the X3 is going to present you with a common um, layout of the screen. So uh, let's take a look at this in the context of our sales invoices. So if we go to sales, then to invoices, and invoices, and we're going to go to the full entry invoice. Okay, so here's our sales um, invoice management screen. And uh, on this screen, um, over here on the left hand side, we have the left list. Um, so this first kind of trade that we have here for our invoices, this basically represents all the invoices that have been loaded into the system. Okay, and I can kind of page over to my next list of invoices uh, using these buttons uh, up at the top, the left and right arrows. Will just tog me to my next set of it looks to be about oh. 75 to 100 records. Um, in addition, on this left list, uh, depending upon the function that you're in, um, you might have um, some additional trays over here. So, for instance, I have this tray uh, here for the last red. I can click on that, and that's going to show me the last handful of invoices that I've viewed when I've been in this function. In addition to that, I have other trays for delivery selection, order selection, contract selection. Um, these would be all used in the context if I was generating a new invoice from within this function. Okay, so let me go back to my invoices tray and I'll choose one of the invoices. And you'll notice that when I choose that invoice, that's going to load uh, the invoice details to the center por portion of the screen here. Um, if I wanted to kind of get a full view of the screen uh, without my left and right lists, I can click on these elements here. And that will kind of make it full view for me. So within a given function, um, basically you're going to have a header section, which contains basically the general information on the record. And, you know, it's going to differ depending upon if we're talking invoices or purchase orders, you know, customers and so forth. But, you know, in this context, you got your sales order number at the top, you know, the associated site, um, you know, the customer's uh, purchase order number, you know, who you're billing. So all information that's general on the order. Then the remaining, the, or the remaining information is going to be organized into a series of tabs. Okay, so when you hear somebody referring to within to a tab within the system, that's talking about these elements here. So in this case, I have a management tab, an invoicing tab, a lines tab, and a valuation tab. And again, depending upon the data element you're analyzing, these tabs are going to be different. But uh, the developers kind of <clears throat> organizing information on tabs just to make it a little bit easier um, when you're looking to find information. So, for instance, if I was looking for something like, um, say, like the payment terms, I could know that, oh, that information is found here on the invoicing tab in this section right here. Okay. Um, you know, if I'm looking for information, you know, on the product that I'm billing the customer, then I'm going to want to come to the lines tab here. And that's going to show me, you know, on a line item level, uh, what my respective billing is. Okay. Um, in addition to that, uh, here in my right list, um, these are all the um, different types of options that we can do on the order. So you'll notice over here on this section, I have, um, you know, a new button. So if I wanted to create a new invoice, I could click on that. I have a uh, save button. Um, so if I've made a change to an existing invoice, I want to be able to save my change. I got a creation button. So after I get, you know, done creating a new element, I'll click on create to commit it to the database. I have a deletion option to if I wanted to get rid of uh, the record. A cancel button if I wanted to, um, you know, stop a change that I was doing. 
Um, I have a couple additional buttons here uh, that are unique to the invoicing. I have an open items button where I can kind of change the, you know, the forecasted payment schedule for the invoice. If I wanted to reg register a payment against the invoice, I could do that through this button. I have a posting button um, associated with the invoice. Um, now that uh, posting button, that kind of brings up a interesting um, topic within the system. Um, in X3, when, when you're creating a new um, element, um, whether it be an invoice, a shipment, a payment, um, when you create a record such as that, you know, that kind of has a bookkeeping impact. When that record's initially created within the system, it's going to be generated kind of in a provisional state, meaning that if I wanted to change the record, um, change a quantity, change a product, for instance, um, if I wanted to kind of wholesale delete the record, you know, I'm still at liberty to do so because it's just kind of in an entered or provisional state. But when I'm at the point when I basically want to, you know, commit the record, you know, to post, you know, to update the sub ledger, to update the general ledger, I'll have a post button here, or sometimes you'll see it um, referenced as a validate button. And when I do the validation of the document, that's basically, you know, firmly committing the record at that point. So I'll no longer be able just to simply delete it. Okay. Um, other options within here, um, I have uh, I have a refresh button here to refresh my screen changes. I have a print button here. So for instance, uh, in the context of this invoice, if I wanted to print out an invoice, I could come to my print button, click on that link, then come to the record. Then within here, I'm going to get presented with a, a variety of different invoice reports that I can choose from. Um, in this case, let me choose this fix footer one. And again, depending upon the function that you're in, you'll be presented with a uh, listing of different reports from which to choose. Okay. This brings us over to our reports parameter screen. Okay. And it's going to, when we, you know, invoke a crystal report from a function, it's going to default in all the appropriate reporting parameters here. Also on the screen, you'll note that um, we have a printer destination that we can specify. So in this case, this is going to be to a preview. Um, kind of uh, when we go through the system, we can actually map in your actual printers um, that your organization uses uh, into our destinations. Okay, but in this case, again, I'm going to do a preview to the screen that's going to be in a PDF format. Okay, so if I'm happy with that, I can just click on the print button right here. And that'll go through and start rendering the record for us. I'll go ahead and I'll open that with my Adobe Reader. Okay, and that will pull up my invoice report. Okay, and when I'm done with that, I can just click on the trash can icon here, and that will remove it from my print list. Uh, also under the print icon, uh, many times you'll see a list here. Uh, when you click on the list, usually it's more analytical uh, reports and inquiries that are associated with um, the list option, whereby the record options usually more so the business forms. Um, if I want to do an attachment to the record, I have this paperclip icon here that I can click on. And through the attachment here, so in this case, maybe if I wanted to uh, put a signed bill of lading, um, uh, you know, and attach that to my invoice through this block right here, I'm able to accomplish that. 
I have a comments bubble down here that I can click on. So if there's a certain text that I want to um, have associated with my invoice, I can do that through this comments grid, you know, customer indicated. Okay, something like that. Let's say okay. Then in addition to that, I have, um, you know, different options in here, you know, capturing header and footer text, you know, updating address information, okay, zooming over to accounting records uh, can all be uh, performed over in this right list here. And finally, as I mentioned before, um, when I'm ready to exit out and go back to my main page, I can just click on close page right here and that will take me out.